8.41. Now, we've been talking today about the government's plans to level up England and other parts of the United Kingdom. This is mostly about handing power and money down from Whitehall to towns and communities around the country and are, in my opinion today, fits in really well with the question of how to tackle inequalities. Let me introduce you to Gary Stevenson, a trader, economist and a self-made millionaire. Hello, Gary. How are you? Hi, I'm OK, thanks. You're someone who grew up, I think, in the southeast, right? So are you an Essex boy? Is that right? Uh, I'm from Ilford, which uh, oh, is a border. subject of some debate. <laughs> <I'm from> <laughs> Essex. Right. So how are you aware of these, level, of these um, sort of regional inequalities and the levelling up issues that are around and we've been talking about? Well, I mean, I've been, I'm an inequality economist. I mean, my background is I worked in the city in 2008 and um, I saw a crisis where the rich got enormously richer and ordinary people did pretty badly. And um, I made my money by betting on the fact that because we wouldn't do anything about inequality, ordinary people would struggle and the economy would be very weak for a long time. So, you know, I know that if we don't deal with inequality, which again is exploding now, we'll have a very weak economy for so, a long, long time. So putting it very simply, you made a lot of money betting on the fact that our economy would stay unequal and the wealthy would get wealthier. Not just unequal, but that our economy would, would be very, very weak for a long time. Because if the money sits in the pocket of millionaires and billionaires, while ordinary people get poorer, then you will not have an economic stimulus. You will not have an economic boom. All you will see is stock prices and house prices go through the roof, which is exactly what we've seen. So you were there working in the city 2008. Fast forward to now, 2022. What are you seeing? What parallels are you seeing with the way that the economy has been managed through the pandemic? Uh, the parallels are unbelievable. I mean, it, it's like deja vu all over again, it, and it's a nightmare, to be honest. So, you know, the COVID crisis was a disaster for ordinary people, but it saw the biggest ever increase in billionaire wealth in the history of this country. Can you explain been... how that happened? I, I think a lot of people have heard that, but don't quite understand it. Well, basically, you know, the economy went on freeze. But the problem is, under a normal economy, very rich people make an enormous amount of income from their wealth, but that comes from ordinary workers. But if ordinary workers can't work, then they can't pay any money to the rich because the rich aren't spending any money. So when the government pumped loads of money into the economy, the rich were still making their income, but they weren't spending any money and they accumulated an enormous amount. The average billionaire accumulated £700 million in the first year of COVID. I mean, those Which kinds bit, of the, the figures are eye-watering and way bigger than any of the money that we're talking about being invested in various different levelling up projects. Right, what is the answer to all of this? You've got a plan. Yeah, it has to be a wealth tax. You know, at the moment we have a tax system which is very, very effective at taxing ordinary working people. You know, I'm sure you pay your fair share of tax when you work. I paid mine. But very wealthy people who get their income from wealth rather than work tend to pay extremely low rates of tax because they don't pay normal income tax. It's capital gains, it's trusts. They have lower rates of tax and they can be more easily avoided. So currently we have a tax system where ordinary people pay very high rates of tax. I paid more than 50% on everything I made but wealthy people pay almost nothing. If you have this system, it is inevitable that wealth will flow up, the rich will get massively richer, which they are doing, ordinary families will get poorer, and the economy will be weaker. We need to shift taxes to wealth, we need to bring in a wealth tax. And how would that wealth tax actually work? Well, the first thing to do is to make clear the difference between wealth and income, right? I come from an ordinary family. I know that for most ordinary families, money is about your job, money is about income. That's not how very wealthy families work, okay? They own enormous amounts of assets, that's companies, buildings, lands, property, and they get their income from that wealth, okay? So it's about the amount of wealth that you own. Ordinary people probably just own a house if they're lucky, but wealthy people own hundreds of millions of pounds worth of assets. It's about looking at the wealth that you own and saying you need to pay a percentage of that back. Because it's important to realize that these guys make money from their wealth and that money comes from us. But at the moment, they're not paying anything back. So it's about not looking just at work, at income, but looking at these families, small amount of families who have accumulated huge amounts of wealth and saying, look, we can't let you continue sucking wealth out of society. You have to start paying tax, not just on your income, which often they don't pay, but on the wealth that you own as well. But this could draw in potentially more, you know, ordinary people, for want of a better term, who happen to have sat in a house over three or four decades that's massively increased in value. If you're talking about a wealth tax on assets of a million pounds. Yeah, I mean, the, the first thing to say is, you know, the most important thing is that the super, super rich get taxed. That's the most important thing. But, you know, I got called up for this program and they said, you know, what kind of level would you be comfortable with? And look, the truth is, you know, I've been very open about it. I'm a millionaire. 
but I'm not super rich. You know, I'm not Rishi Sunak, who has an estimated worth of 200 million pounds. And if I say, look, let's come in and start the tax at 10 million pounds, well, that's not going to affect me. But what I'm saying is I'm willing to contribute. I'm willing to contribute. I'm willing to pay more. And I think the wealthy people of this country would be willing to pay more if it was going to improve the economy of this country. But the most important thing is if people like me are going to pay, people who are millionaires but not super rich, then the super, super rich like Rishi Sunak and Jacob Rees-Mogg have to pay too. And it's about fixing the economy of this country. How do you pay a tax on a house if you're not selling it? Well, I mean, there are many ways you can do it. You know, you can, you can take loans out on that house. If, you, if your wealth is in sort of ten hundreds of millions of pounds, you should be able to easily raise cash. But there's a few economists who have looked at this. There's Aaron Advani, there's Gabriel Zuckman. Basically, you know, they say the government can take a small percentage ownership share. You know, if we're talking about people with wealth of 10, 20, even 100 million pounds, they can afford to pay some percentage of that back. And there's various ways of doing it. They can borrow against it or the government can take small shares of ownership. You know better than me, right, the Laffer curve, which basically says that the higher you tax people, there is a point at which you then start to accrue less or fewer tax receipts. You don't get as much back because I guess simply put, ultimately, very rich people will find ways to protect their assets from taxation. That's the problem, isn't it? Yes, I mean, that question's been bouncing around for a bit. This idea about the Laffer curve, that's about income taxes. And, you know, it's been contested, the idea. But the idea is, say, if you were to have a 100% tax on income, well, people wouldn't work, right? You wouldn't work if you're going to lose all of your income from it. But we're not talking about income here. We're talking about wealth. The whole idea is we want to move wealth away from wealthy people towards ordinary families, okay? And, you know, if you had a 100% tax on your income, you could say, well, I'm stopping working. But if you have a high tax on your wealth, well, what are you going to do? You're going to give your wealth away? Well, that's what we want. We want ordinary families to get their wealth back. You know, that is the whole reason why we need to tax wealth, because it's less avoidable, because they can't stop holding it. Let me read some reaction, because you're getting lots. Uh, get this man on more, please. He's absolutely spot on. Can we make this guy chancellor? This man is fab. This man speaks the truth. At long last, it's on the radio. This one here. Your caller on wealth tax is talking tosh. Assets of one million, including a house, does not mean you have money or earn a huge salary. Many people have worked all their lives and still not retired that are on a normal salary that would be penalised unfairly. Uh, it's utter rubbish, says Sean. Yeah, you, t you know, to be honest, I'm, I'm very sort of understanding of that. The truth is the way that house prices have gone, especially in the southeast of London over the last 10, 15 years, there are a lot of people who have lived relatively ordinary lives, who have not been super rich, who are now millionaires because of what has happened to house prices. And it's important to make clear, look, these guys are not the problem here, really. It's not the, the well, ordinary millionaires, it's important to say a million pounds is a lot of money. These guys are not the problem, really the problem is the super rich. And if you were to say to me, look, let's come in at five, 10 million and only get the really, really rich, I, I would bite your hand off and say, let's do that. But what I'm saying is, look, I'm happy to pay too. And I wouldn't be talking about any sort of really significant taxes on people above a million pounds because, you know, now in a lot, a lot of parts of the country, that amount of money is only enough to buy you a house, basically. But um, what I'm saying is that I'm not super rich, but I'm a millionaire. I'd be happy to I pay mean, I, I should say, I sh you keep saying that. You are super rich compared to most people in this country. Well, you that say makes that, you super say rich. That, but I'm you know, a million pounds is 200 times less than what Rishi Sunak has and yeah, more yeah. than a thousand times less than what his well, father-in-law has. Yeah, you know what I'm very, saying? Very few people, very you know, few I, people I, in that I league. can buy, like, one nice house in London, but Rishi Sunak can buy 200. OK. And I, I should say, to be fair, across the board, no political party has ever gone for this. Not the Conservatives and not Labour. They've not got anywhere close to raising the sorts of money you're talking about. Yeah, you know, it's interesting you say that, but if you go back and look at sort of the 50s and 60s, which are generally considered to be the golden era of capitalism, we had much, much higher rates of tax on wealth. You know what I mean? It was much more, more difficult to hold huge amounts of wealth and to accumulate and hoard it within families. And what was the case at that time? Houses cost two to three times the income. There were lots of good jobs. It was generally considered to be a time that was, that was great to be alive economically. You know what I mean? Um, I don't think it's a coincidence that now we've stopped taxing wealth and we've moved to a situation where the rich are getting richer and richer and richer, that house prices are going up and inflation's going up. You know, at the beginning of COVID, I put a video out on my YouTube channel, Gary's Economics, saying, look, the rich are going to get massively richer here. That's going to massively increase inequality, house prices and inflation. And it's happened. You know what I mean? If you allow the rich to get richer, that's what will happen. House prices, inflation are going to go through the roof. We need to do something about it. Garen, really enjoyed listening to your arguments this morning. I know people will... Um you know, agree and some will disagree. And, and that's what we like. It's provoked a reaction and got us thinking in a slightly different way. Thank you for coming on and talking to us. Thank you. All the best. Gary Stevenson, trader, economist, millionaire himself.
as he said, but not super rich, as he said. So what do you think about all of that? Uh, as I've already mentioned, loads of you sharing your thoughts. 85058, send us a voice note via WhatsApp 08085 909 693 if you want to have your say like Gary. It's 752. 